Soft face hammers have 101 different uses in the shop and I use mine mostly for tapping down stock in the vise. I've been using my grandfather's old copper and rawhide mallet and it's uh, completely inappropriate for the kind of work I do. And uh, yeah, it's also seen better days. So I think time to make something more appropriate. So today in the workshop, I will be making a machinist's hammer. The head weighs 400 grams or 14 ounces and is made of two poles, one of phosphor bronze and one of aluminium. And these have been balanced around the shaft, uh, hence the unequal lengths. The bronze pole of the head is really good for giving something a good whack without marking it, such as uh, knocking something down in the vise. And the aluminium pole offers a little bit more rebound and sensitivity and is um, actually really good for setting things up. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through how I made it. I should be making this today from a Hemingway kit and as per usual they send you a brilliant set of plans, some very useful build notes and all the bar stock that you need to complete the uh, project. If you are interested in uh, buying one of these I'll leave a link in the description. The first component we're going to make is the handle and this is made from half inch mild steel which is supplied with the kit. And the first feature we're going to machine onto the handle here is the screw thread that will accept the nut that holds the head onto the uh, handle. The thread that's specified in the drawings is quarter BSF. Uh, that's British standard fine. Uh, I think for my friends across the pond, that's about 26 TPI. Um, I'm gonna actually make this a metric thread just because I've got metric um, taps and dies. So I'm gonna turn this down for M6. We need to put a cosmetic taper in this handle and uh, in order to do that we're going to need to turn it between centres. So I'm going to centre drill the end of this piece before flipping it round and centre drilling the other end. I need to configure the lathe to turn between centres so I've taken the chuck off and I'm putting in a Morse Taper 5 adapter and a dead centre and I'm now fitting the faceplate. And um, the next thing I'll do is to put a drive dog on the end of the work so that I can actually, um, I can actually turn the work between centres. To turn this taper, I'm going to be using my set over centre tool that I made in a previous video. Now, what this allows you to do is to um, offset the uh, offset the work uh, for taper turning without having to disturb the tailstock uh, setting, which is quite useful. Um, if you're interested in seeing that build, I'll put a link in the description. I need to mark out some of the features on the shaft, so the uh, the start and the end of the taper, as well as the start of the features for the for the handle. So I'm just taking some of these uh, dimensions from the drawing and using an old set of calipers that are broken, don't use your good calipers for this, um, I'm marking out uh, the dimensions on the shaft of the hammer. I'm starting this taper cut with this uh, square carbide um, insert tooling that I've got. Um, I'm getting quite a poor surface finish, so I swapped the tool out for a different, uh, different uh, insert type, but this doesn't improve things any. Um, and the conclusion I've come to is that the lathe's running too slow. This carbide tooling wants to be run pretty fast, and because I've got the faceplate on the lathe, um, if I run it any more than about 300 RPM or something, um, then I get too, way too much vibration. Um, so <clears throat> if I were to do this again, I think I would probably use high speed steel tooling, which you can run quite a bit slower. So in order to deal with the surface finish, I am going to sand and polish the shaft. I'm starting off with quite a coarse grit. I think it's a 120 to remove those tool marks and then working my way up through the grits to a 400 grit. Um, and then finally finishing off with some scotch bright to give it a final polish. I want to create some sort of feature on the end uh, for a handle uh, for decorative reasons and to give a little bit more grip. So I'm plunging in here with a round nose form tool. Uh, about half a millimeter at a time with about five millimeter spacing and then uh, slightly deeper and wider at the end there just to finish it off. And the final operation on this part is to flip it around in the in the in the chuck and to machine the other end of the uh, the shaft there. Um, I'm protecting the um, already machined surfaces with a little piece of aluminium drinks can and I'm using a lathe file here to round the end over um, and then just finishing that off with some uh, different grades of sandpaper and finally some scotch bright. So that's the handle of the hammer finished. I'm reasonably pleased with the way it came out so now it's time to move on to making the head. I'm using the aluminium stock that came in the kit and uh, this comes in sort of uh, fairly oversized. I think it comes in about an inch and an eighth um, and we need to turn that down to about an inch but I'll do that in a later operation. For the time being I've, I've centre drilled that and I'm just um, using a feeler gauge there to uh, uh, to set the, uh, the depth on the DRO so that I can get a fairly accurate depth here. We need to drill this to about three quarters of an inch deep 
to create a, a bore that we can then um, use to attach to the, um, to the other pole of the hammer head. After drilling to close to final size, um, I'm going to um, bore the last bit. It needs to be a close press fit on the, uh, on the spigot that we're going to lay to machine on the other pole. Um, we're opening this out to half an inch right now and yeah, it does need to be quite close, so uh, hence the boring bar. You might be wondering how we go about measuring a bore like this with any degree of accuracy. Now you could of course use a set of bore gauges but they get very expensive very quickly and a more economical way to do it is to use a set of telescoping gauges like these. They come in a range of sizes and you can compress the anvils into the head and lock and unlock them at will. They make quite a satisfying noise when you, uh, when you unlock them, hence the alternative name snap gauges. I'm sure there's more than one technique for using these gauges but the way I do it is to compress the, uh, the anvils lock them, insert them into the bore, unlock them, move the gauge past the center point, lock them very slightly, and then move the gauge back across so that the anvils sweep the inside of the bore and hopefully pick up the accurate diameter. What you then do is you, uh, you can directly measure the uh, distance across the anvils with a micrometer. Now I would recommend doing this a couple of times. Uh, it is quite easy to bump those, those anvils by, by mistake. So uh, yeah, re you, know, you should repeat the measurement a couple of times. And what I'm shooting for here is just under the half inch so that I can come in with a reamer and bring it to final size. And to finish this bore off, I'm gonna give it a nice generous chamfer. Um, this is going to interface in a moment with the uh, the spigot on the other pole and I don't want the corner radius of that spigot to, to interfere with the fit here. I want those um, those mating faces to, to butt up against each other um, with no interference. Now we're going to move on to the phosphor bronze pole of the, uh, the hammerhead and the first operation is to face it off followed by machining the spigot. Now the spigot is... Um, is going to be a press fit into the uh, into the bore of the aluminium pole, so it needs to be a very accurate half inch diameter. So I'm checking the uh, diameter regularly and syncing that with my DRO, and we need to cut that to a length of five eighths. And now I'm going to press fit the uh, two poles together before I finish turning them. Uh, if you don't quite hit your tolerances here, you can use something like Loctite 648 to permanently uh, glue the pieces together. Now I've glued up the entire part and um, I'm laying out the features um, here as you can see. And uh, you'll notice that it is running out quite a bit. And uh, that's not going to be a problem because we're going to be finished turning the entire OD. But of course, you can't finish turning the entire OD in one pass because you, you need to be able to hold on to the, uh, one, end of the, one end of the part, right? So the way that we solve this is by putting in two grooves, one either side of the shaft, and you finish turn up to one groove, and then you flip the part around in the chuck and you finish turn up to the other groove. I need to bring this aluminium pole to length, and um, it should be one inch in length, which is about 25 millimeters. Um, it's machining quite nicely. And then, uh, what we do next is we reduce the diameter again to uh, one inch um, to bring it in line with the, uh, the phosphor bronze pole of the head. And for this final finishing cut, I'm going to use um, some isopropyl alcohol for lubrication, um, just to try and improve the surface finish. I've opted to dome the end of um, each pole of the head um, just very slightly. I think it will look better and I think it will be a little bit nicer to use, but I mean, this is a completely optional step. You can just leave it square if you want to. And a little tickle with the uh, scotch Bright just finishes it off. I've flipped the part round in the chuck and I'm about to start machining this second groove. Now, um, I haven't worked with phosphor bronze for a long time and I'd forgotten quite how hard it is. It's much harder than brass, Look, at it, despite the fact it looks similar to brass, it's much, much harder. It's almost like machining um, steel. Um, and yeah, in hindsight, um, trying to do a parting operation or a grooving operation this far out from the chuck in phosphor bronze was uh, a mistake because this happened. So yeah, not a brilliant result. I've uh, destroyed my parting blade and I've chowdered up my newly machined part. So uh, yeah, onwards and upwards, let's try and fix it. 
So I've rechucked the part and I'm coming in with a standard turning tool to try and repair that uh, groove closer into the chuck this time um, and then we can carry on with the machining. I'm going to bring the phosphor bronze uh, part down to length. I'm not going to machine the OD on this side just yet. Uh, I'm going to flip it around and try and repair the uh, damage um, from earlier on. Now I'd already machined the part to size so it was exactly one inch 25.4 millimeters and uh, yeah, obviously I'm going to have to remove enough material to get get rid of those kind of chowder marks, right? So um, I managed to get away with removing about a millimetre. So we're at 24.5 millimetres rather than 25.4. So not the end of the world, really. And then I move the part out of the chuck and, and machine the central portion uh, to the same diameter. And then I'm just going to finish it up with some 400 grit wet and dry and some scotch bright. I was quite pleased with the finish that we got in the end. Um, I think it's looking pretty good. So it's now time to flip it round and finish the final end. Again, I've chosen to dome the end of the uh, of the head here. Uh, I'm not doing too much, probably a sixteenth of an inch, maybe one and a half, two millimetres, something like that. Um, and then finishing it off with some scotch bright. And now it's time to drill the hole for the handle. Um, this was my initial setup, but um, due to the fact that the handle was offset to one side, I didn't have enough drill clearance to get the, uh, the drill bit in there. So I ended up with a collet block and a screw jack. In order to locate the correct position for the um, for the handle of the hammer, um, I'm edge finding both sides of the vise, which should give me the central position, and then the uh, end of the workpiece, and then I can calculate back to where the, the hole should be. Now the plans call for this through hole to be 7 16 to accommodate the, uh, the nut that holds the handle on the hammer. Um, I also need to countersink top and bottom, and again the plans call for a half inch, uh, half inch countersink, which we'll do with an end mill. Now I've chosen to do this in metric, so I've I've spot spot drilled it, uh, pilot drilled it, and I'm coming in with a 9.8 drill here, and then I'm going to follow up with a, a reamer. And now I'm going to create the countersink for the handle here uh, with a 12 millimeter end mill, just plunging straight down. Um, I'm then going to need to flip the part to countersink the other side. Now it was at this point that I realised that I should have really used my uh, spin indexer to to do this. I wouldn't have had to relocate the part, but um, as it was, I didn't think of that at the time. So I'm having to uh, uh, to come back in here and try and relocate that hole on the axis of the spindle with a, a drill. This is less than ideal. Um, I mean, if you have to use this technique, then uh, it would have been better to use a gauge pin or something, but I don't have any gauge pins, so I had to use the drill bit. But uh, it all worked out okay. I managed to get the uh, the, the hole in the right lo location, and uh, I came back in with the milling cutter and cut the second uh, countersink. On to the final component now, which is the nut, which holds the handle of the hammer onto the head of the hammer. The plans call for this uh, nut to be 7 16 in diameter with a slightly wider head and um, three quarters of an inch long. Now I said uh, earlier that I'm going to be making mine uh, metric so I'm turning the main body of the nut down to 10 millimeters uh, with a 12 millimeter head. I'm going to be drilling and tapping this M6, but you could of course use whatever you like. The plan's call for quarter BSF. Um, it obviously just needs to match the thread that we put on the handle of the hammer earlier on. Now we've finished the main body of the nut, so we're gonna part it off, flip it round in the, uh, in the jaws and uh, face off the other end. And I want the end of the nut to, um, to look quite nice because it's going to be on show. So um, I'm just going to finish it up with a, a little bit of 400 grit, wet and dry there, and um, finally with some scotch bright. The final feature we need to put into this nut is a screw slot um, so that we can get a screwdriver in there and, and get some purchase on it to tighten it onto the handle. And um, I've taken it over to the mill. We've got a collet block set up and I've got a slitting saw blade uh, in the spindle and what I'm doing here is finding the center of that um, of that nut so that I can cut the slot on center so I'm just touching off on the top of the uh, nut with the saw blade and I'm going to zero out the DRO next we need we move the saw blade um, down uh, to the bottom of the nut and touch off on the bottom of the nut and we can then use the half function on the DRO to find the halfway point on the nut so we can cut the slot directly on center now the plans call for a 50 thousandths wide slot in the head of this nut. 
Um, now, as per usual, I don't have a slitting saw in the correct size. So uh, I'm using a one and a half millimeter here, and I think that'll be fine. It's ever so slightly wider, but um, it's just it just means I'm gonna use a bigger screwdriver when I'm tightening the nut. It's gonna be fine. And that's the nut finished. So it's on to final assembly. The plan's called for uh, two flats to be filed in the uh, head of the shaft there so that you can um, get, a sp get a spanner on it and, uh, and, and, uh, and torque it up. But I, I prefer the look of it without the, uh, without the flats and I found that um, actually I was able to tighten it just fine. Um, I'm really pleased with the way this came out. It feels really balanced in the hand. Um, it's just absolutely amazing to use. And it's going to be a big improvement on my granddad's old hammer, which uh, has seen better days, as I said before. In fact, it almost seems uh, too nice to use, uh, but uh, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? So uh, I'm just going to have to get over it and uh, accept that it's going to get a little bean up with use. Um, now, we've got the phosphor bronze head here for knocking things down in the vise, which is great. And then the aluminium pole, which is uh, gives you a little bit more rebound, um, a little bit more feel. Uh, it's going to be useful for setting things like that. So, um, yeah another great fun little project um really enjoyed using it you can build this with just um you know a simple lathe you don't really need a mill and i actually think it'd uh, make a really good little beginner's project um and uh, a, a really useful tool to have around the shop if you enjoyed the video i've got plenty more uh like this coming up lots more tool making videos for the channel planned so uh stick around for those and um if you feel like dropping me a like and a subscribe that would be very much appreciated because it really does help the channel uh, thanks for sticking around to the end, folks, and I hope to see you next time.